Now it's my turn. <laughs> so hello everyone, it's so good to see you all. Uh, we are very happy to be uh, hosting this meeting today uh, with uh, Los Angeles and uh, San Diego, our members in both areas, Southern California. So as you know, and I feel super weird talking in like a little uh, square here. This is actually looking very, very, very uh, movie-like and we are excited. We wanted to put something really fun together to connect. Uh, as you know, we are uh, really looking to provide a space for all of you to kind of touch base, network, get together. We are doing a lot of regional meetings throughout the state. And we wanted just to take this opportunity to really connect a lot of our members in Los Angeles, uh, also with some of the organizations we have in San Diego. It's going to be such a nice uh, agenda what we have today, and I'm going to let Heidi talk about it. But I just wanted to really Can welcome you, you all and um, yeah. and just look forward to uh, hearing from all the great work that you are uh, doing um, in the regions. Uh, and connect more, like have some opportunity for networking. So I'll turn it over to Heidi, Heidi and um, welcome everybody. Thanks, Carolina. And we thought we'd do a little Hollywood theme since we're down in Southern California today, virtually. Um, so um, First, we're gonna do a little bit of networking just to get you guys connected. I know part of the reasons why you like to come to the regional meetings is to get to see people. We're gonna put you into small groups and we'll give you a couple of updates. Then we're gonna have this LA San Diego program showcase. And then, uh, and then we'll give you a couple of minutes. We'll take a couple minute break and go get your lunch and then come back and um, hang out with people, depending how many people are able to stay and eat and be with us. Um, we, will, um, we will go ahead and we're gonna do a brown bag network. I'm gonna go get some, I made some cauliflower coconut soup. So I'm gonna go get that and I'll bring it over and we can all hang out and talk and um, have some get connected again. Um, so with that, um, we don't have enough time to do like introduce everybody because we have kind of a large group. Um, and um, so what we're going to do is send um, for now, if we could just to get an idea of everybody in the room, do a quick chat, put your name in your organization. Um, and then we're going to send you guys into after we do that, we're going to send you guys into um, networking groups. Um, so go ahead and put your name, your organization and um if you're specified i know you're all socal but if you have a more specific um location that you serve hi elizabeth <laughs> don't forget that uh, uh, elizabeth is uh, now the ceo of accessory and we have the accessory team with us today and claudia from centro sbdc and monica is with cdco is serving northern los angeles all right and SCORE Los Angeles, hi Nar Narjis, and Bo from Pace, Emma from Lisk, and we've got quite a, Bo and Emma um, are on our EA steering committee, um, can't, Elaine, Rocio, I can't get all of you, you're all typing it in so fast, Mar Marie Garcia from SoCal Hispanic Chamber, thank you for joining us, awesome. Well, great. Um, Noe from CDC. Hi, how are you doing? It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. I think it was, I remember seeing you in February 2019, our last in-person thing that we did in SoCal at the LA Chamber. Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay's also on our steering committee. So is Monica. Myra, good to see you, Myra. Um, wow. Alex in San Diego with Bitwise Industries. Nice. Um, Frank. Marina, Mar Mary from FDIC. Mary, thanks for joining us in the Los Angeles Alliance. Star, Eric from City Heights CDC. It's really great to see so many great, so many diverse people that we haven't seen in a long time. So thank you so much for joining us. It's really good to see you all. 
So now what we're going to do, we're going to give you, um, put you into um, breakout groups of, uh, let's see how many people we have, Lisa, all together. 42. Let's do groups of three. Um, to, so it'll be two or three. So 14 breakout groups. Did I do my math right? 13, 13 or 14? 13. Two 13. Some will have three. Maybe one will have four or something. So, hey, Ron, good to see you. Yeah, this is just an amazing, amazing array of people who are doing the good work and helping, doing so much good work. And it's just an honor to have you guys all here. So, Lisa, when you're ready, we'll pop the questions in. Um, where are you located? Um, you know, you, 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 a short description, you can talk about what you do. Um, but I also want you to put in what is your favorite new program that, or your favorite program that you've done last year, some, some thing, and we'll put those um, notes into chat when everybody is in your breakout groups. Um, this is just a great chance for you guys to connect with someone you might not have connected with before. So Lisa, whenever you're ready. He's back now. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. I hope I hope uh, if you haven't didn't get a chance to get everybody's contact number that you were in a group with to send send them a little message. Uh, um, and uh, uh, get their get their contact name so you can um, connect and outside that I know eight minutes isn't a lot, especially if you had four people. So thanks, thanks um, for joining us. And want to give everybody a couple of quick uh, updates for Cameo. And the, I want to start with first by introducing all the Cameo staff who are on because we do have a bunch of new staff and we have a, quite a few people and we have, you might not know them. Um, let's see, you met Carolina in the beginning. If you don't know Carolina before, she's our um, fearless leader and uh, Carolina Martinez, she's our CEO. Um, Emily Gasner, who is not here, um, she'll be joining us. She had a previous commitment. Um, she'll be joining us at noon. Emily is our uh, VP of Strategic Initiatives, and uh, she of the she is the uh, director of this our CDFI incubator, which is a suite of programs to help new lenders. Um, come up to speed and start and become become lenders extraordinaire. Um, and then uh, we have Lisa, who you all might um, have been introduced to before. Lisa, you want to say hello quickly? Hey everyone. Good morning. I'm Lisa Rivera. I'm the outreach manager at Cameo. I joined the team in April. I think I've seen most of your faces here, but there are very many new faces. So I'm so glad that you're able to join us and that you're going to hear about all the great work that uh, different orgs in LA and San Diego are doing. So thank you for being here with us. And I, 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 I spaced out for a second. Did you say you're located in Southern California? Oh, no, I didn't. I am in <laughs> okay. Orlando Beach. Um, and there was some crazy things that happened at the beach yesterday. You probably saw it at, on the news mm -hmm. the shooting, but um, that's really unheard of, I feel like, by this beach area. But I am in Southern California. So I'm local to many of you. So maybe it's, you know, in the near future, we'll see each other face to face in person. <laughs> Excellent. And then I believe Rage is on the <clears throat> line. Rage, you want to say hi to everyone? Yeah, I am here. Um, sorry, but my video, I'm not sure why it's not working, but it's just it just won't show me when I click start video. But anyway, my name is Rage Connolly. Um, I've been with Cameo since April as well. Um, and I work in operations and um, I do a little bit of work with California Relief Grant as well. And I am based in Long Beach. Awesome. So we are expanding our reach down in Southern California. So, um, so you all have representatives down there. Um, so to, to help you out when you need it. Um, I want to let you know about a couple of upcoming programs. Um, so Lisa, if you want to share, thank you. Um, we have two upcoming programs. Um, we have 
the micro lenders forum, which is going to be on September 29th. Um, that's for all our lender members. Uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. will be there's a sketch. Um, we will will be um, pulling out the agenda soon. There's a sketch up there on on the Eventbrite. I think you could on the oops, sorry on the Zoom, so you can go ahead and um, pre-register. We have uh, uh, we have a lot of really interesting things. There's so much going on. I think the our hard problem is trying to narrow it down. And then our one of our signature classes, Micro Lending Essentials, will be held October 25th to 29th. Um, you can email Lisa, she'll pop her email into chat. Um, if you're interested in attending and you can get on the wait list, the wait list basically will be open and you'll be the first to be able to sign up for that. Um, the we have a couple of EA entrepreneurship advantage updates. Um, if you have not attended a virtual meetup, um, we invite you to join us. Um, I know we have LA and San Diego. San Diego, feel free. Um, but it is it, we are mostly um, focusing on the e LA ecosystem. EA is a if, if, and if everybody who is on the steering committee. Um, could just raise your hand or do a like button, do some kind of reaction. That would be great. So if you want to connect with one of the steering committee me members, you can. Um, if you're in, want to know, learn more about it. Um, we have a virtual meetup on the 23rd. That's kind of it's it's kind of the same time as the fourth Thursday of every month as we we kind of crashed the EA party today and um, for the cameo. Uh, LA San Diego regional meeting. And we also have, we're also getting together a program matrix of all the different resources and programs that you guys have um, so that it, it's in one place. And basically that would be, it's gonna be a document that will, you'll be able to hand out to someone to say, hey, are you, do you need help with your restaurant? Maybe there's somebody in, in the, um, ecosystem that specializes in restaurant or fashion or you need a loan or you need a you know whatever it is that is that is your secret sauce that's kind of what the program matrix is um, it will tell it will give resources to other entrepreneurs so that you guys can help refer people so I think with that I am done with the cameo updates and we're going to move into our showcase of the great talent that we have in Southern California. Um, and the first, um, we, we've organized everybody in, we've organized the order in a sense that makes, it, uh, makes sense to us at Cameo, which is to talk about the ecosystem in terms of the five C's of an entrepreneurial ecosystem. That's coaching, capital, connections to markets, um, the five, those are three C's and we have two other C's. Those are the ones we'll be talking about today. Two other C's, um, uh, two, the, our two other C's are culture and climate. Culture is how your community thinks about um, entrepreneurship. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? Do they support it as a community? And then climate is the regulatory process and the policies that we put into place. So we're going to start out with coaching because I like to say coaching is the first step in the capital access pro process. And for coaching, um, we have two, um, three speakers who are going to talk about their programs. And I'm going to hand it over to Lisa to introduce them one on one. And I am going to be quiet. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get started with our first Speaker. So I'm going to cue our special effects person. There she is. There's Bo. Bo, you're up first. Hi, good morning, everyone. Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> so my name is Bo Sivanan Sagun. Uh, I work with the Pacific Asian Consortium in Employment. So we are a nonprofit organization and we primarily serve businesses 
in Los Angeles uh, County. So today I'm here to introduce you our new uh, recent services. Um, so I want to talk briefly about the PACE Minority Business Development Agency. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar what is the MBDA is. So it is basically the program that funded by the US Department of Commerce and is the only federal agency that concentrate on growth and global like competitiveness of minority business enterprises. So um, the purpose is to help these businesses, you know, penetrate into the new market, including like domestic and global. Um, so we help this business securing capital, competing for contract, and also help them identify strategic partner of becoming like export ready. So right now there are three MBDA in California, uh, one in San Francisco, one in San Jose, and we are the only MBDA center in Los Angeles or Southern California. We have become the MBDA Center in July 2021, so it's new to us. Um, and as mentioned earlier, that is the only MBDA Business Center in Southern California. I provide more information if you want to learn more about what is MBDA at the link below here. So uh, what do we do as the MBDA? So um, the first is that we you know, provide training and technical assistance. Our target goal is 100 uh, businesses per year. For the MBDA, our target client uh, with the revenue of 500,000 or above, we also have to help them with the procurement assistance. So our target goal is 50 million per year. We also help with the financing, including like insurance and bonding, and our target goal is 25 million. So although that pays, uh, we have been operating in Los Angeles County uh, mainly, but with this program, we are able to expand our services into seven county in Southern California. So there are Orange County, Ventura County, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, Imperial, and LA County. And we also provide uh, services in languages, as mentioned here, uh, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Thai, Vietnamese, Tagalog, and you know, other languages. At PACE, we have a cap capacity of speaking of uh, 40 languages in general. Mm, so I think the next slide would be our contact information for our MBDA team. So uh, if you want to reach out for the procurement assistant, I provide Andrew, um, our procurement leader here. Also, um, if you want to talk about the business development, you know, feel free to contact Diana. And if you just want to learn more about the program, you know, you can email or call the number 213-989-3158. And if you would like to have more information about our organization, you can visit the website below here. So, you know, hope I provide sufficient information for you to learn about MBDA program. And if you have any further question, you can feel free to, uh, you know, sorry, I didn't, I didn't provide my contact information, but I will put my email address in the chat box below here. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, and I'll send, I'll be sending the recording, the slides, all of this great information to everyone by the end of this week. So if anybody has any questions for Bo, we have some designated time for that right now. You can unmute yourself and ask her directly or feel free to drop it in the chat. Does anybody have any questions for Bo? So many languages, Bo, that's amazing. That's so awesome. Congrats on that new program. Uh, I think because LA is so diverse and you know we try to be able to speak the language that the community do. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. It's very important for sure. All right, so I don't see any questions at the moment. So thank you, Bo, for your presentation. And we will move on to the next person. Thank you. You're up, go ahead. Hi everyone, my name is Bria Stevens and I'm the Small Business Fellow with Betsetic Small Business Development Project. Perfect. 
So um, I'm the Small Business Fellow. We have a new program director. Her name's Nadia Segura. She started a few weeks ago. So we're very excited um, to have her on board and be able to grow our program even more. And um, so then just to talk about Bethsetic generally, um, it's a nonprofit law firm and we provide our services to people in LA County for free, regardless of anyone's race, religion, ethnicity, or immigration status. Um, we have a lot of different departments um, and I work with the Small Business Development Project. So then just to talk about who we target and the different types of services that we offer, um, we're designed to help low to moderate income business owners. Um, we do have certain parameters. So we assist with transactional type issues. Um, we don't handle um, litigation and we do not help nonprofits. We only assist for profit businesses. Um, and we do have um, other parameters too, as far as our direct representation, but we also um, have a lot of different resources available. So we do community presentations and workshops where we work with um, community organizations and we'll partner with pro bono council just to try to um, get some educational webinars out there. We also offer direct client representation. And like I mentioned, we do have certain eligibility requirements, parameters um, where we look at financial status and things like that. But um, with that program, we're able to place small business owners that are operating in LA County or who wish to operate um, with directly with attorneys so they can get legal assistance with their um, businesses. We also have several online FAQs and guides on things like entity formation, bankruptcy, um, on um, other types of corporate transactional issues, where it's basically just an FAQ going through all of the need to know for different topics. Um, another thing that we just started um, back in March and April, and we're really trying to grow more, is doing virtual legal clinics. And that kind of combines two aspects of our programs where we do a series of presentations, um, but shortened to like 10 to 15 minutes on important legal topics. And then um, we also follow that with one-on-one -on -one direct consultations. And so in that clinic, we are able to offer people like limited counsel and advice there. So we're really excited about that new program and really hoping that we can grow it in the future. And then um, in 2020, we were able to partner with even more organizations and really grow our services and our, expand our reach to small business owners. And so um, with that, we've received over, a lot, over 400 applications. Our program is relatively new, started a few years ago, um, and it was slow moving, maybe 100 applications per year. But with the pandemic and the effect that it's had on small business owners, um, we've, it, the number has more than tripled, um, especially with issues like commercial leases and entity formation, IP questions. We've had a lot of businesses reorganize themselves to be in virtual online type of um, format instead of having a brick and mortar um, shop. So our program has really responded to that. So we put on a lot more um, commercial leasing webinars. We developed a lot of different types of FAQs and guides that are helpful to um, like COVID-19 financial relief for small business owners, um, COVID regulations for reopening your business and how to take care of your employees and customers, things like that. So our program has really um, responded to those types of issues um, where we've done more um, virtual. That's why we developed the clinics actually, just to be able to try to meet that need and so we've been developing these new FAQs and guides, really helping um, the partnering with more community organizations and also working to place more small business owners with pro bono counsel. And so then this is just for questions. We do have an application link for people to apply for our services. So if you guys are interested in having the link to share, very happy to share it. Um, but we also have a resource page and that's where we can find those guides and FAQ that the small business owners can find the guides and FAQs that are very helpful. Um, and then I'll also put my email because I'm always on it, very happy to respond and, and um, Nadia Segura's email too. Um, for questions or any types of um, input or anything that you would like for our program. And so that's the Small Business Development Project. Thank you, Bria. Does anybody have questions for Bria? Do you want to mute yourself or drop the question in the chat? I thought I heard. Just one quick question. How long does it, is the, the application process take? Uh, are you, is it a type of service that is good for clients who have immediate issues or just something that they need? It's a more longer term that they need a couple, two or three weeks for it to be processed. 
Right. So we prefer people with when it's a longer time process. We don't work that fast with immediate turnarounds. Um, we do have an application process and then there's an intake call. We have to determine eligibility and then we'll find direct representation. So we always tell people who apply, we can't promise that that'll happen quickly. We're happy to take people who may have immediate issues, but we do um, give that forewarning up front. But we also have partnerships with other groups that if there is a quick turnaround that's necessary, we'll refer people to those organizations who can work better with that. Do you have an entity formation uh, workshop or presentation that's uh, written that you could provide? So we ha I have an FAQ, if that's something that's um, of interest to you. We have an FAQ that goes over the different types, compares um, pros and cons and, things, and the obligations for each. We do have that. That would be great if you, good, great if you could get that distributed. Okay, I, I'll put my email in the chat. Yeah, Bria, you can go ahead and send it to me as well, and I can email it out to everyone. So, yeah. Okay. So, any resources that the speakers talk about today, or any special requests, I'll make sure to get all of those items from everyone who is presenting, and I'll make sure to email it to everyone. Thank you, Bria. Does yeah, anyone no else have any other questions for her before we move on to the next? presentation. Heidi? Okay. <laughs> I, I do. I think I, I'm really curious as to what you're hearing as far as the commercial um, rent problem and commercial lease negotiations. Is Are people able to? Or what, what's going on with that? Yeah. So uh, uh, the thing with Bedsetic is we are like a tenant friendly only type of organization. We don't really talk to, um, we don't really assist landlords, especially a program. And so from what I've seen as far as my program, it's really hard to tell if so, because it, it truly just depends on if the landlord's going to be amenable to negotiations or not. And um, we have referral services where we we'll refer people to different mediation organ, um, organizations too, but it's truly just dependent on how willing the landlord is to talk. And with the extensions with the moratorium, what we've seen is landlords just don't say anything. They either are very gung-ho about, I'm going to evict you because they're betting on small business owners not having the resources to fight it, or they'll um, just not respond at all. And what we're thinking is they're waiting until moratoriums end to hit people with these extremely large bills for rent that's been unpaid. So it's kind of been extremes on the opposite end. We have seen some who are willing to talk and we there's been some ne successful negotiations for payment plans or deferments, things like that. But it's truly just been a hit or miss as far as how it's going to go. So we're kicking the can down the road. That's uh, it's a little scary. Okay, thanks. I do see a question in the chat. Um, they're asking, where do landlords go for help? So when... Um, when we have landlords apply, we usually refer people to the Los Angeles County Bar Association um, to their attorney, uh, attorney referral service. That's usually where we do send um, landlords. Great. Or Thank we'll you. refer them. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Bria. I was going to mm -hmm. say, or we'll send them to the De Department of Consumer and Business Affairs website. We, um, we, we had a year-long partnership with them where we, um, to fill grant obligations, we did educational webinars and we also gave them a lot of resources and their website is geared to help both landlords and tenants. So we do give them a lot of resources to, be, um, to groups that would be more helpful. Great. Thank you everyone for those questions. We're now going to move on to our next presenter to make sure that everybody has a chance. So Dania, it's your turn. I hope you, I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, Danea. Danea, okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here. Are you gonna, you're sharing my, okay, perfect. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. Hi, everyone. My name is Danea Ramos, and I am the program manager for Jacob Center for Neighborhood Innovation and run a program called Connect All at the Jacob Center. So it started back in 2019, CAJC started then, uh, but the partnership started back in 2017 where the Connect Foundation and the Jacob Center for Neighborhood Innovation uh, did an RFP with the city of San Diego. So who we are, uh, Connect All the Jacob Center is the first region's uh, low to moderate income and diverse focused business accelerator program. Uh, the reason why we started this is because we realized that the accelerated programs that are here in San Diego uh, did not focus on diverse or minorities, and we wanted to make sure that we provided an accelerated program uh, that allowed individuals uh, to get 
to go and apply for an accelerated program. Uh, the program also includes a business resource center. It's okay, you can do it there. It also includes a business resource center where we help out small business owners uh, from all over San Diego County. So if you look at these pictures, uh, the business resource center is right when you walk in, we actually have two computers in the front, which is amazing. So people that don't have any computers can come into the space and utilize it. Uh, although our uh, space is closed right now, hopefully once we open up, we can uh, allow people to come in. And then we have the accelerator program, which actually has about 42 uh, cubicles where we allow our accelerator people come and use as a co-working space. So the Business Resource Center is open to everybody that lives in San Diego County. Uh, we help entrepreneurs start their business. So we help them with business licensing. Uh, we refer them to a couple partners, uh, for instance, San Diego Volunteer Lawyer Program to help with the business entity. And then also we help out businesses that are probably been in business for a couple of years, but need some help with specific projects, for instance, a marketing plan or help with financials. Uh, we provide uh, monthly workshops every month and we have office hours as well. And starting within the next couple of months, we're gonna have a new program called C3, which is gonna be called Connect Credit and Capital, which is gonna be a 12 week program where we help individuals uh, make their personal credit good so that they can get access to capital. Uh, the Accelerator Program is a four-month program, so each month is focused on a different subject. The first month is focused on customer discovery. Second month is focused on financial modeling. Third month is focused on sales. And then the fourth month is focused on marketing and business strategy. Uh, and the difference between the Accelerator and the Business Resource Center is that the Accelerator has a set uh, curriculum, and you go with a group of 12 to 15 entrepreneurs. Uh, each entrepreneur, entrepreneur is linked with a mentor. Uh, as I mentioned before, we also have a co-working space where they can use anytime, any day. Uh, we give them a key fob. We also have those weekly workshops. Uh, and the one thing that we have to make sure for the Accelerator program is that every business that is part of the Accelerator program, they live in the city of San Diego and their business has to be in the city of San Diego. Uh, I mean, I can go over this program goal. So for this year, we are going to be servicing hopefully 150 small business owners. Uh, we're hoping to create and retain at least 33 jobs. And we want to help create and expand about 75 small businesses. This is just for this fiscal year. Uh, what we learned, because we are fairly new, uh, before when we first started the accelerator program, it was a six month program and we brought it down to four months. Um, we blocked out each month because before every week was a different subject. And now, like I mentioned, uh, the first month is focused on customer discovery and so forth. Uh, and then we saw that a lot of these entrepreneurs love going to our program because they have the sense of community. As you all know, entrepreneurship is very lonely. And so when they go through a program with individuals that are going through the same journey as them, they really love that. And then the Business Resource Center, we started doing monthly workshops rather than trying to do more than one. Um, office hours are then done right after the workshop um, with the same subject. And then people just like to come uh, and talk to people from the Business Resource Center because it's a safe space. And sometimes they just need someone to bounce ideas off of each other. Awesome, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dania. Um, does anybody have any questions for her? You can feel free to unmute yourself or drop them in the chat. Thank you for sharing your goals and what you've learned, you know, the different programs that you shared with us. That's important. Um, okay, I don't see any questions. So we'll move on to the next speaker. Thank you so much. So next up, we're going to focus on capital. As Heidi mentioned, um, we kind of outline the presenters to talk about the different five Cs. So first up on capital is Emma from Liz LA. Hi, good morning, or almost good afternoon to everyone. I'm Emma Kloppenberg. I'm a program officer at the Local Initiative Support Corporation, also called LISC, and I work out of the Los Angeles office.
Um, so I'm going to be talking about our small business resources today. Um, as a program officer, I run our uh, small business lending, grant making, and technical assistance programs, all of which I'll be running through on this deck. So LISC, you may or may not be aware, um, we actually have uh, now 37 offices um, across the country. We are based out of New York. Uh, so we are a national nonprofit community development financial institution or CDFI. Um, and our mission is to transform underserved neighborhoods into thriving communities of opportunity. Um, and we have several departments um, and I work under the economic development department where we provide supports to small businesses through capital and wraparound technical assistance programs. Next slide, please. So on this slide is a quick snapshot of our small business lending products. Um, so we provide uh, lending to small businesses um, from 100,000 up to 5 million and larger. Um, our interest rates vary from 6% up to 10%. We actually uh, also have additional more flexible capital right now that both brings us down to a, even in the 5% range. Our terms are three to 10 years, and we will, if there is collateral or personal guarantees available, we will seek them on our for-profit entities. Um, and we have several technical assistance programs currently running as well. Um, the first program is called the BBET Initiative. It's the Black Business Excellence Technical Assistance Initiative. It's an accelerator for Black-led businesses in the personal care space. We actually just notified our, our uh, fall cohort uh, this past week, but please stay tuned for our next cohort on the LISC website. The second program is actively recruiting right now. So if you have any businesses that are looking for digital upskilling, um, our application is currently open and we'll close this Sunday. It is, this program is another uh, digital accelerator to provide uh, businesses led by people of color support um, that are in the industries of personal care, retail, and food. And we're gonna be providing one-on-one -on -one consultants, training modules, and networking opportunities. And that will also run in the fall. Uh, last but not least, we have an, our Ascend program. This is another accelerator program where we have service businesses in the construction, health services, IT, and professional services industries and the fall cohort is specializing on construction only. Um, so I provided the relevant contact information on each of these programs. So please feel free to reach out. And then last but not least, uh, we have an online resource hub that we would love folks to take a look at. It is lacovidfund.org. On this website, you can access um, a range of different resources for small businesses. You can get connected with a technical assistance provider. You can sign up online for in-person or online trainings. You can stay up to date with our uh, grant opportunities, our loan opportunities. You can apply for any of our programming that I've mentioned, and you can take a look at our past um, impact on uh, our prior programs. Um, my contact information on, on the right-hand side, again, I'm, I'm a Poppenberg, a program officer, and our executive director is, is Tanua Thrash Intuk, and her contact is on the left. Thank you, Emma. Does anybody have any questions for any of the programs or anything else related to LISC LA while we have Emma here? I have a question. Go for it. Hi, Emma. Um, I'm curious about your construction accelerator program. Is that designed um, specifically for existing construction companies looking to grow and expand or, or for new um, individuals interested in, in starting a construction company? Yeah, good question. It is for businesses that are currently are running and operating in the construction industry. Um, and we provide um, uh, uh, procurement assistance to help them grow their contracts. And you can take a look at ascendla.org for more details. And I can type that into the chat box as well. Thank you. 
Thank you, Eric, for your question. Does anybody else have any other questions for Emma before we move on to the next speaker? I have a quick question. Emma, how'd you, how'd you go for personal care for, was it, did you just find there was a lot of demand? Like, how did you guys decide which, where you were getting your, where your focus was gonna be? Yeah, good question. Um, so we um, had a robust amount of data when we ran the LA Regional COVID-19 Recovery Fund, um, under which we deployed about $100 million in, uh, at the end of 2020. Um, and we took in under that um, over 100,000 applications from small businesses. And so we had a, a, a large amount of data around the biggest need and also um, the highest overlap of businesses led by people of color. So given that those two criteria, we wanted to provide a specialty fund in that industry. Great, thank you, Emma. I appreciate your time. Um, we're now going to move on to our next speaker. So next up is Elizabeth with Accessity. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, everyone. It's wonderful to see so many familiar faces and some new faces. So thanks, everybody, for having us. Um, I'm going to jump in here. I think most of uh, many of you are familiar with our organization, but we're a 27 year old CDFI. Um, we just recently rebranded. So our new name is Accessity, but we were formerly um, Axion serving Southern California. And our mission as a CDFI is really to open the doors of financial opportunity um, to those who historically lack access to capital or business support, really primarily focusing on entrepreneurs of color, women, immigrants, and those of low to moderate income. Um, and, you know, we've, uh, we've had an array of different programs and products and services that we've offered over the many years that we've serviced Southern California. Um, and to, today I'm going to highlight two. One is a training program that we've been running and the other is a new product that we're going to be offering. And so, Currently, we service where most of our staff is in the San Diego area, but we do service a Southern California region of Imperial, Riverside, San Bernardino, and San Diego counties. And we're also looking to expand further um, ge geographically, um, so we may be working more with many of you on this call in the in the near future. So, um, you know, I think as far as lending goes, generally our loans range anywhere from three hundred to a hundred thousand overall, and we will work with peer startups as well as expanding businesses. Um, and so we've been doing an array of regular business lending as well as COVID relief and low interest lending. But one of the programs and products that's brand new that we're going to start to launch here shortly is um, we were approved as the first micro lender through the state of California through their small business energy efficiency financing program. And so our team has worked with um, the state and multiple other partners uh, and we're expected to launch um, this program with the state and a local partner SDG and E as our energy um, company as well as a third party administer, administrator, uh, Will Dan, uh, in the San Diego market. And it's really meant to be micro loans that specifically support energy efficiency financing for those that may want to improve or upgrade equipment, lighting, and other efficiency purposes. Um, and we really wanted to focus on it being a quick turnaround, um, no upfront fees. So you can see the terms. And, and we are focused on, on really micro sizes. So the loans would be 500 hundred to 5,000, really trying to reach the small businesses um, who maybe, you know, haven't had the opportunity to finance energy efficiency. And so we're really excited about this opportunity, just, um, you know, working with various partners and also trying to, you know, make positive change in our climate and, and through small businesses. So um, it will be something where the small business will have to work through a certified contractor that 
that the project is approved and then the loan would be financed through that. And so I think that, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. We don't know exactly what the demand is going to be, but, um, you know, we anticipate launching in the fall. So we don't have any lessons learned yet, um, but I'd be happy to share once we roll it out and, and see how it goes. And, and we're really excited to partner. And we hope to bring that to other areas in California, not just um, here in San Diego. So that was one program that we're getting ready to launch. And then the other one that I'll share is more of a training, um, but also has an access to capital component and it's our Accessity Academy program and we've actually been running it since 2013. Um, we started to see as a lender and particularly we do a lot of startup lending about 35 to 40 percent of all of our business is startups and when I say startups I mean pure startups people with an idea a basic business plan wanting to start their business and we started seeing that some of them weren't necessarily prepared and so we started a program in partnership with Wells Fargo initially that was a 10 week startup training academy and you, you can actually see us, um, this is one of the academies prior to COVID where we were in person um, and we were actually in uh, Danae's space down the hall in the Jacobs Center at Connect All. Um, so we partner a lot with them as well. Um, and, you know, there's an opportunity for so somebody who has an idea, but really wanting to focus on bringing that idea to fruition. And one of the things that I think is interesting about this program is we don't teach every class. So we work with about eight to 10 other partners where where we bring in the city or the county or the state or the SBDCs or other um, financing options. And they run a program basically from A to Z on how to start a business. And so at the end of it, at the end of the 10 weeks, they have a business plan, financial projections, they have connections to resources, they do a basic market study. And then there's a panel of people who give them feedback about their actual um, business idea. Uh, and then there's a graduation and upon graduating, they're eligible for a $5,000 startup loan through this program. And so we actually generally run between one to two cohorts um, of about 25 to 30 entrepreneurs each year. And just last year, we started a partnership um, with the Eva Longoria Foundation in which we've been administering loan capital and loan funds in partnership to support Latina entrepreneurs. But we actually started this um, program specifically for Latinas in Spanish. And so we translated all of the documentation and, and, um, and training curriculum into Spanish. We run it for women and um, we are on our second year of offering that program. And so we're um, you know, really excited to be doing that. We find that about 25% of the people graduating actually access the loan. So um, some don't need the capital, some choose not to start their business, which we think is a success too, because you know you wanna recognize how much work it is to start a business. Um, and we really are focused on racially and ethnically diverse communities. A lot of women in the program um, and the majority fall within low to moderate income limits. And one of the things that I think is interesting about the Spanish speaking one that we've just recently done is we've had the opportunity to provide access to computers and also Wi-Fi. So if women who are applying to the program don't have a computer or they don't have Wi-Fi access, we'll actually pay for it so that that's not a barrier um, to entry to the program. So, and then if they graduate, they get to keep the computer um, as a piece of equipment to help them start their business. So um, those are the two programs that I would highlight that are um, you know, going on within our organization as part of our overall uh, support to small business in the community that we create for Southern California businesses. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Elizabeth. Does anybody have any questions? You feel free to unmute yourself or drop it in the chat. I'll, call, I'll make a comment. Elizabeth, I think you there's a lot of creativity using the, you know, I think, uh, you, donors might be more interested in getting like, hey, let me give a computer to somebody. Does that, is that, is that what you found? It's like they, it, it, I feel like it's something really tangible that they can glob onto and it might be um, sort of a carrot for investment. 
Yeah, I mean, I think there is some sense of that. And I think, you know, you talk about the digital divide and, you know, obviously we've seen a lot of that in our lower income communities. And I think one of the primary goals of, of our partnership with the Eva Longoria Foundation was just making sure that there wasn't a barrier to entry to participating into this. And so the ability to make sure that we were providing every um, support resource for women to enter into these programs was really exciting to them as well. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's, that's great. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. I'll make sure to share all of this information with everyone. I appreciate your time. So we'll move on to the next two speakers, Monica and Noe from CDC Small Business. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having us here. Uh, I'm from CDC Small Business Finance along with Noe. We are partners in crime in the Los Angeles County area. Um, so we'll actually both be presenting on this. Um, so we wanted to talk to you not just about, you know, most of you are familiar with CDC and are familiar with our 504 loan products, with our small business loan products, but we actually have a lot of new and interesting uh, programs that I thought may be of interest to those of you on the call. So we've uh, come out with some industry verticals that we're trying to really dive deep on, as well as place-based. So I'm on the industry part, I'll talk to the industry vertical itself, and then I'll hand it off to Noe to talk about the place-based part. So uh, as you guys probably know, CDC has been around for over 40 years doing small business lending, and the industry vertical is really an effort to try to reach entrepreneurs um, with a good understanding of their industry. So our two uh, industry verticals that we launched with are home health care and child care. And those were chosen very particularly because of the high concentration of women-owned businesses within them and the high concentration of minority-owned businesses within that, those sectors. So it was with you know, the full intentionality of being able to reach underserved populations in the industries in which they're starting up and expanding businesses. Um, the other thing is that, you know, home health care and child care have this kind of exponential uh, result in the communities that they're based in. So it's not just a business that, you know, is, is, is uh, a restaurant or a retailer, but it's also offering a service to the community that's, you know, really highly valuable. So uh, with that, our uh, effort was really to train our staff from loan officer all the way through the process on the nuances of the industry so that they're not having to explain themselves about, you know, how they get paid from a, you know, a government agency or, you know, why they need working capital before they get their license. So those nuances is something that we've kind of built in through the entire um, client experience so that the, you know, the client has a much easier, uh, you know, processing time as they go through it. And of course, we have our, uh, uh, a very small but very powerful technical assistance team. Uh, that we have that is able to do complementary technical assistance once we have them as a client. So it's not a technical assistance in the traditional sense of being, you know, kind of open to the general public, but is very targeted towards uh, existing clients and entrepreneurs and to help them through their growing pains. So this is really great for startup businesses in the home health care, child care industry or expanding businesses. And with that, I'll hand it off to Noe so he can explain the place-based piece. Great, thank, thank you for the introduction, Monica. Um, hi everyone, happy Thursday. I'm Noe Castillo, I'm a loan officer as well with CDC Small Business Finance. As Monica mentioned, I'm a, uh, you know, uh, the partner in crime uh, to trying to help the LA community. And part of the things that, uh, for, those that are you, the, for those that are not aware, we recently created an alliance with another uh, CDFI by the name of uh, CIP or Capital Impact Partners. And part of that alliance is, is creating new ways that we can help those communities that have been highly impacted by the pandemic, and one of, and, and therefore, we created a co-pilot uh, place-based program, which I, actually we're doing a concentration in the South Los Angeles um, area or market, um, especially with more concentrations in city of Inglewood, uh, the Pico, and also of course the development of the Crenshaw district. So those are the areas of concentration that we're doing, and we're trying to help those um, uh, entrepreneurs and business owners that. Um, and, and therefore, um, also, we're still doing a, a bit of also concentration on African-American and Latino uh, entrepreneurs to help them get access to the capital to either create new businesses 
or, or help them to you know, keep those businesses within this community. So therefore we created this uh, place-based program to provide flex flexibility in our credit box, uh, giving more, more, uh, more room for those that have some challenges with their personal credit, uh, for those that maybe don't have the, the enough capital to start a business, we're providing some flexibility on that. And then also, of course, like Monica mentioned, we do are offering that uh, complimentary TA to help them throughout the process of getting this started though. So, uh, so if you happen to know any business owners within this area that, that really need the help and that support, we're here to help. And that's what we're hoping to accomplish is just to, you know, helping to promote um, that, that, that access to capital to the minorities and those people that always have those challenges on, on getting that money, uh, access to the capital. Um, I guess with that being said, um, as far as the, what the portion that we're doing with the uh, place-based program for our South Bay LA, we're looking to do loans anywhere from 20 up to 250,000. If the loan happens to be a little bit below 20,000, we will consider it. Um, our, in, our, our pricing is gonna be based on prime plus our spread. Um, and we can do this, this loans anywhere from five up to 10 years. Uh, so once again, in regards to my program, uh, we're gonna do concentration in the South LA market uh, minimum FICO 620, but there's flexibility as long as we can make sense out of, out of the problem. And there's no collateral needed for this program. Um, and I'll let Monica talk about the, the, um, the healthcare and chalker. Absolutely. So yeah, same, same kind of parameters as far as loan amount and starting interest rate. Um, I think that the really great thing too about the healthcare and childcare verticals is that they are available throughout the state. Uh, and uh, you know, credit score of 620 and collateral is not needed for approval, which is really important. So uh, especially for those of our clients that don't necessarily have a lot of assets to start off with. So to make it a little easier, uh, we included all the uh, direct contact information for each of us. Um, for our home health care uh, industry vertical, we have Stacy Sanchez. She's based out of our uh, uh, inland office, but uh, as I said, she's available to do health, home health care loans throughout the state. So regardless of your geographic location, you know, she's one of your primary contacts for home health care. And then same thing myself for child care and then Noe for our South LA place-based uh, initiative. Okay, so that completes um, the presentation for Noe and Monica. I know that Eric had a question that Monica answered already uh, just momentarily ago. Does anybody have any other questions or comments for Monica Noe from CDC? Let's see, I don't see any hands. All right, thank you, Monica Noe, for presenting. So let's see, yes. Okay, next up we have Juan Carlos. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you just fine. All right. Well, it's good to see you all. Thank you for having us. This is kind of cool. I love the um, sort of like the Japanese movie special effect. I feel like I'm in a Godzilla movie where the sound effect, <laughs> I can see my mouth moving, but like the sound comes afterwards. Um, this is kind of cool. So. Just a little bit about California Southern Financial Development Corporation. We are, we basically are an FDC that have established a partnership with the Infrastructure Bank also, or better known as iBank in Sacramento. Um, we actually started 32 years ago. And one of the things that we are doing very well is our program was established to encourage lenders to make small business loans um, to businesses, especially for startup businesses and businesses that have been that have had difficulty obtaining access to capital from from conventional sources like banks and, and other financial institutions. Um, one of the things that we have established a great deal of partnership with is through the CDFIs. I am happy to say that we do have a working CDFI rule. With, we have a working relationship with LISC, Accessity, and CDC. So. Um, love to be able to, you know, I love the work that they do. Um, so I don't know, Lisa, if you want to start uh, with that, pass the, there you go. Um, a couple of things that we actually use, and I'm not going to take up too much of too much time from this. Um, we basically utilize, or the funds can be utilized for a variety of different purposes. 
uh, from startup costs, working capital, inventory, purchase of equipment, um, tenant improvements, hiring new employees. So the only folks that we don't, this, the only, I guess, um, funds that we do not guarantee is for any type of speculative investments or any kind of passive investment. So for real estate investors who just want to continue to pick up commercial real estate or even just real estate as a whole, we don't finance those type of loans. Um, our loans or our guarantees range from anywhere from $20,000 all the way up to $20 million. We have a maximum guarantee of $2.5 million. Uh, we are very similar to these SBA 7A program. Oops. And... Um, we're very similar to them. Uh, we basically are at the third, we do up to seven year maturity date. However, the loans can be amortized up to 20 to 25 years, depending on the comfort level of either the bank or the financial institution. Um, our interest rate, one of the things that makes us a little bit different from SBA is we don't have the additional documentation requests or forms that the SBA does that, that mandates. So we are a good alternative to, for financial institutions to use in order to be a little bit more flexible um, to actually serve the entrepreneurs, small businesses, especially the ones that are looking to do, you know, a, a smaller amount up to, you know, from 20,000 and above. Um, so this is where we actually come in. The state of California has, there's seven of us located. There's one in Sacramento, one in Oakland, Salinas, um, Orange County, Los Angeles, and the Fresno Valley area, and us in San Diego. Uh, we from San Diego have been blessed enough and, and to be able to work throughout the entire state. We actually have partners as far north as Ukiah. We have several partners in San Francisco area, as well as many of the partners in Southern California. Um, so one of the things that we've done is we don't dictate our interest rates. That's basically established from, you know, with the lender. And so we basically work through the lender's uh, specifications and their lending criteria. We obviously, our biggest, our biggest focus is to make sure that the loans are being given to small businesses, primarily focused on women and minority owned for the creation and retention of jobs. If we can jump to the next slide. Um, for this particular last fiscal year, one of the things that we are very proud of is the fact that many of the small businesses that were not eligible initially to obtain a PPP loan or an EIDL loan from the state, excuse me, from SBA, um, we were able to establish with partnerships with a variety of different lenders, Accessity included, and CDC, to be able to establish what's referred to as the disaster loan program to assist many of the businesses that were financially impacted by, this, the, by COVID and the pandemic. Um, through this particular program, we were able to fund um, almost 1,400 loans at just on, you know, about 57, for $57 million um, for various businesses throughout the state of California. Um, so we were able to provide those funds to these small businesses that um, needed the funds that were not eligible to get financing through either SBA programs. And this includes um, business owners who are either foreign investors or who are in the United States um, undocumented, but are uh, legitimate business owners. We were able to assist them with this particular programs as well. So, and then of course the businesses, you know, I mean, the, the pandemic didn't impact all the businesses. There were certain businesses and certain business industries that were not impacted. Actually, they were impacted positively. We were able to do a total of those for 118 loans for a little bit over $21 million in those particular aspects. So this is where it is incredibly, we're very proud of the fact that we are very flexible. Um, and we work very closely with our lenders to listen to what their needs are. And we can go to the, to the other slide. So we were basically listening to what their needs are and to be able to ensure that we're providing them with the services that we need. So basically there's a couple of different folks that you can contact. Um, but again, this is literally, we have a very strong 
program. And, our la and the last slide literally is just more for informational purposes of how we are incredibly competitive with SBA. As a matter of fact, in some instances, we're actually less expensive. And well, we will be less expensive because SBA right now is waiving all of their fees until September. Once September hits, they're gonna go back and charging uh, their normal fees. And at which point we will be incredibly um, competitive with them. And actually in many cases, a lot more affordable and much more flexible to work with. Um, on that end, that's pretty much my presentation. So quick, simple, but um, you know, again, I'm just really happy to have we've been able to have very strong relationships with many of our CDFI lenders, including um, strong relationship with Cameo in allowing the work to be passed through through the entire state. That's it. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Does anybody have any questions or comments? for him before he jumps off and we move on to the next speaker. I love your background. Roger uses that one too, and it just looks so cool. <laughs> Makes me feel like we're on vacation. <laughs> I will be after uh, this phone call for at least a long weekend, so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Juan Carlos, for your time. So I don't see any questions. So we'll move on to our last speaker. And the last um, C that we're going to be discussing today is connection. Connections to markets and other networks, including other entrepreneurs. So we have Rocio, who is going to talk about um, a really cool roundtable. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having us. First, I'd like to introduce myself and then have Latavia introduce herself as well. My name is Rocio Flores and I work for USC University Relations, Office of Civic Engagement and Economic Partnerships. Uh, we offer a lot of programming for small business owners, entrepreneurs, and nonprofit leaders. We have our Bridges program, which is a business development training and coaching program. We partner with Betzedek for a lot of the uh, training and workshops there as well, and are really happy to also have Found LA as our partner and support for that program. The Academia de Negocios is a program that we offer in partnership with SBDC, Centro de Negocios. So thank you, Claudia, who's also on the call. We have our nonprofit program, uh, where currently we're servicing 41 nonprofit leaders in Southern California and our South LA network, which is done in partnership and collaboration with LA South Chamber of Commerce and LA Urban League. So those are just a few of the highlighted programs we offer. And I think you all can kind of see a theme of collaboration and partnership. And a lot of what we do uh, wouldn't happen and wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for our partners and the relationships that we have in the community. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Latavia to in, have her introduce herself and share a little bit about Small Business Majority. And then we're going to share about a very exciting initiative that we partner on together. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Latavia Pineda. I am the Southern California Outreach Manager and National Latino Outreach Manager for Small Business Majority. In case you're not familiar with Small Business Majority, we're a national education and advocacy nonprofit that focuses on getting resources into the hands of small business owners, whether that's about um, access to capital. Latavia, I think you froze. Uh, which is a really, oh, there you go. You froze for a moment, but you're, uh, you're back. Okay. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. But yes, I was saying we host Venturize.org, which is a great resource hub, um, includes lots of information about different lenders. I'm sure many of you are included as resources on, on uh, Venturize. Um, and like Rocio said, uh, we do a lot of partnerships with our community partners. Uh, many of you have worked with us in the past and very excited to be here today talking about one of my favorite initiatives, which is our Women Uplifting Women Small Business Roundtable. Rocio. Thank you, Latavia. So specifically, we wanted to share about this initiative that uh, started, I would say, almost two years ago now. Small Business Majority and USC and folks in our offices came together and really wanted to. You can go on to the next slide, um, Lisa. Thank you. So we wanted to come together really with a purpose to foster community and empower women business owners and entrepreneurs. As we know, Small Business Majority has a national reach, which is really great. And we've had women from all over the country join our roundtables with a specific concentration and focus on Los Angeles. 
And so we want to be able to engage women who are on the same journey together so that they can build that, continue to build that network and learn and grow with each other and from each other. So we wanted to include this slide because you know we there's so many great programs out there, a lot of technical assistance programs, which we also offer, small business majority offers as well. Uh, but this initiative and these roundtables are are very unique, and I think they provide a platform for women to really come together. And this is something we share every single time when we get together quarterly with the women, is we focus on these three pillars. It's a safe space for women. We want um, them to come together knowing that there's always challenges, but that they're not alone, that they respect each other enough to listen and understand without judgment, and that this is their time. They actively engage. Every single roundtable has brought something different based on the women that are in the room, and they really make the experience possible. Um, and it's their time to be authentic and speak freely and openly and just enjoy their time together. These are our three goals. Um, we want to build that sustainable, strong community. We also provide very specific tools and information that foster their both their personal and professional growth. So there's always some sort of theme that we focus on. And I'll share what those have been uh, in the following slide. Uh, and some exercises and, oh, go back to the other one, sorry. <laughs> some exercises that, and tools that they can take back and work on either independently or with their teams or reuse when the time comes. And then it's to connect them with resources. So combined efforts between USC and small business majority and our wide networks, there's so many resources and supports um, and programs and uh, grants and different things that they can access. And so we definitely take the time to share that with them as well. Next slide, thank you. So these are our session titles that we've had, our, our themes, if you will. We've uh, had the opportunity to service over 280 women throughout these seven sessions. So again, it's quarterly, it's every three months. Um, and I won't read those through, you can kind of see but the different topics. So we do, we have focused more on resources specifically, but we really also dig deep into the, and humanize the person behind the business, which is really important for us. To, uh, to have conversations, really uh, kind of compelling open conversations around articulating their worth, propelling their success. And our last session was creating synergy with their customer. These are just a couple of testimonials that we, we gathered that we'd like to hear from folks. And definitely it's important to know that it's having some sort of impact. And so folks are finding these sessions informative and inspiring. And we encourage all of you to, um, to stay connected with us so that when the roundtables happen, you all are welcome to attend and participate and share the information as well with your networks. Um, it is being done virtually right now, and maybe in the future, we'll look to having something in person where we can come together around maybe some delicious food as well and break bread together. But for now, these virtual roundtables are um, done virtually, and so they're very accessible to, to women. And I think the next slide is just our contact information. So if you have any thoughts or questions, ideas, or you want to partner with us, um, please connect with us via email on LinkedIn. And we both, Small Business Majority and USC has newsletters that we send out as, as a lot of you may already know. And so we provide a lot of this information and in upcoming events. And that's all, thank you. Thank you so much, Rocio. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I think it was very appropriate to end with a bang when it comes to talking about women since today is Women's Equality Day, which is really cool. So I think that was a nice ending to our presentation. Um, okay, so I don't see, oh, I have to move over. <laughs> any, I don't see any other questions or comments, so I will pass it on to Heidi. Thank you. Oh my God, you guys, I think this was just an amazing um, display of examples. Let's see, I just wanna make sure I'm in the camera here. Amazing display of examples of the ecosystem at work and all, a lot of the organizations are doing a couple of pieces of it, whether it's connections and capital, um, whether it's um, capital and TA and coaching, um, I just think it was like a beautiful 
this is the ecosystem and there's room for everybody to participate and partner and there's so many good ideas um, and takeaways from that a couple of them I, I, I loved Elizabeth overcoming barriers and the verticals and training your staff on on like what those businesses are really are those are a lot of good best practices came out of here so um, maybe we can capture some of those um, high points and and just to get people thinking about how to apply those in their um, in their uh, own organizations. With that, I just want to thank our amazing group of speakers and all the organizations and the work that you guys are doing. And even if you didn't present, I know you've been working. This year has been really, this year and a half has been really hard for everybody. So just everybody, stretch up. Do a big stretch and pat yourself on the back because you've been doing an amazing job. Um, Lisa, are you able to um, uh, give us a little music? We're gonna um, take a break and come back. Um, we're gonna stop sh and we could stop sharing the screen now. Um, if anybody wants to stay for lunch, we're just gonna kick back. If there's somebody that particular that you wanna go into a breakout room it, it, with, We'll be able to do that for you. Um, if you want to have a deeper conversation, a longer conversation, or just join us for lunch. So I'm going to um, 